everyone. This is Yana Smakula for SimonSusTM.com and thanks for joining me today. Welcome to another episode from my bi-monthly Yippie Vayana video series. And lately, I have been enjoying playing with various coloring mediums and I've been feeling inspired to color even more. So today I have a dramatic Christmas card to share created using a mix of old and new products from Simon as well as colored pencils. I have been coloring a lot using my Polychromos pencils from Fiber Castell, and I have a similar but much less detailed video using Polychromos on my YouTube channel. For this video, I used my Prismacolor pencils uh, just to show you that a look like this can be achieved using not just one brand of products. So whatever brand of pencils you have, I encourage you to pull them out, grab some black or dark colored cardstock, outline stamps, and color away. I started working on my card by prepping my black cardstock panel, this is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half inches, with an anti-static powder tool. I plan to do a lot of heat embossing here, so using an anti-static powder tool is essential to maintain the background as neat as possible. I want to stamp and heat emboss an entire background for my A2 card, and you can do this in many different ways. Today I'm using a poinsettia stamp from the Winter Flowers stamp set from Simon Says Stamp to stamp a poinsettia pattern for my card. The reason I picked this particular image and not something else is because this image is large and because it is an outline image, so it is intended for coloring. There are a few details to this image, uh, but the image itself is not overly detailed. In other words, the details of the image will not be in the way of my coloring. There are these dashed lines that will make the coloring a little bit more difficult, but they add a lot of beautiful details to this design. If you are attempting this kind of coloring for the first time, I suggest you pick a simpler image with less details to it. Look for some leaves and start there. This is how I got started. So I've already stamped a number of poinsettias onto my background using Simon's embossing ink. And next I'm covering the entire piece with Hero Arts brass embossing powder. I usually like to use gold or antique gold, but decided to switch things up a little bit this time. Next I'm using my heat tool and melting the powder. This background already looks beautiful as is, but I'm also going to add a few leaves to these flowers. I went over the image again with my anti-static powder tool, it's better safe than sorry, and I stamped a couple leaves next to each flower, making sure to overlap the images. So pretend I have masks on my flowers, and pretend that I'm stamping the leaves onto these masks. Again, I'm going to cover this with my brass embossing powder, and before I heat set it, I'm going to use a paintbrush, this is a dry paintbrush, and going to remove the powder from the flower petals. I learned this technique from my friend Svetlana Shayevich from craftwalks.com and I think it's safe to say that I am now addicted to it. As I'm removing the powder from the flower petals, you can still see the stamped lines. Now these won't be visible on the finished project as I'll be adding layers and layers of pencil coloring on top. Once I removed the embossing powder from the sections I didn't need them on, I once again used my heat tool and heat set the image. Now I still have a lot of that anti-static powder left on my black cardstock. It, it doesn't really look black, it's a bit gray. So I'm using a regular pencil eraser and simply going over the entire panel and erasing the powder. And now we are ready to color. Now I will be honest with you. Do not expect to color a background of this size in 10 or 20 minutes. It will take you a good hour or more, depending on how meticulous you'll be. I'm going to start by coloring the leaves first. I picked several pencils, several colors of pencils, from my Prismacolor pack, and to color the leaves, I'm using a lime peel and green ochre. The coloring really has no special tricks to it. I simply start coloring the shape with a darker pencil. In this case, I am adding a darker green where the leaf is coming from under the flower petal and shading the tip of the leaf with a lighter pencil. I do overlap both colors and often, if I feel the need, 
I can either go over the dark coloring with a lighter pencil or vice versa, depending if I want the color to look lighter or darker. I do have to mention that when coloring with colored pencils, a pencil sharpener is a must, or better, better yet, two pencil sharpeners. I always seem to be misplacing one of my pencil sharpeners and then use the other one. But you want your pencils to be sharply sharpened. I don't know if this is the right way to say it or not, but I hope you know what I mean. Coloring with a sharp pencil is much easier and in a way is more pleasant. Also, if your pencil is sharp, it'll be much easier to color next to the heat embossed lines and you'll be able to make sure you color over the entire section. Now, these pencils, the Prismacolors, are very soft. In fact, they are so soft, you'll see bits of pencil all over your work surface as you color. And if you're coloring on white, this might be a problem as you might accidentally smear it on your card. This is actually why I don't like coloring with these pencils on white or light colors of cardstock. You can carefully brush the pencil lead away with a dry paint brush if you need to, to avoid having this problem. I also like to color with my polychromos pencils from Faber-Castell, and those aren't nearly as soft. So when coloring next to heat embossed line, you have to be careful not to bump into the line too hard as you might damage it or you might even scrape off the powder. I've moved on to coloring the flowers now and since the flower petals are a bit bigger than my leaves, I'm using three colors for my coloring, a light, medium and dark. The colors are light aqua, aquamarine and cobalt turquoise. I particularly like how various shades of green and blue look on black cardstock. And I think um, the black of the background really helps these pencils come to life and they almost look velvety on the card. I really quite enjoy this kind of coloring. It does take a lot of time, but I find it relaxing. I'm going on a retreat soon and I plan to bring a few heat embossed backgrounds and some of my colored pencils to color on the plane and also while I'm there. Keep in mind that you can color on other colors of cardstock like white and craft, but also on unexpected colors such as say pink or red. So here's what my colored background looks like. I think it turned out fantastic and I'm really happy with the colors I picked. Now it's time to turn this background into a card. I adhered my background onto an A2 card base made out of white cardstock. So even though the front of the card is black, the inside is white. To create a sentiment for this project, I used one of the new sentiment sets from Simon, the stained glass greetings set, and I heat embossed large joy, as well as may your Christmas be filled with. So the sentiment says, or the sentiment reads, may your Christmas be filled with joy. There is a set of coordinating dies available for this stamp set, so I used a die to cut the word joy out. I also used the same die to die cut an identical joy layer out of black double-sided sticky fun foam from Scrabble Adhesives to be able to pop the joy die cut up. You can use regular foam tape or foam squares, but I really like to use this product for something like this. And the reason I picked black instead of white is simple. The background is black, so using white foam adhesive would made it too visible if looking at the card from the side. I foam mounted the joy and next used foam adhesive to adhere the sentiment strip on top. So this finishes this video. I hope you will give this idea a try. As always, please do tag us on social media so we can take a peek at your projects. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet done so. Thanks so much for joining me today. I will see you next time. Bye.